Okay. <clears throat> so here's what we're doing today. Um, now, I, I actually have a whole uh, presentation on some of these things. I have to update it. It's, it's a couple years old, and I need to put it um, – I need to put some updates in it, some things I've uh, learned the past couple of years, and then uh, that'll probably be next month, one of the things for next month. But anyway, so I was uh, upgrading a partner's internal CRM this this um, uh, this past week, and I wanted to show you some very, very typical things. So this is a very, very lightweight system, not a lot of code here, but what, what I found in there is very, very typical of CRM systems that are, are old. So this system started out, I'm fairly sure, at either 1.2 or 3.0, so it's quite old. And as things go along, you kind of have a tendency to lose focus of where things are. So especially if you have a lot of cooks in the kitchen, things get added, things get uh, changed and stuff like that. So what happens is we just don't know where things are supposed to be. So um, what I did is I ran, the first thing I did is I ran their JavaScript through my trans, um, uh, Transformer JavaScript conversion tool, not really to the, in hopes of converting anything, but more or less just to kind of get a general idea because it does a lot of analysis and stuff. And um, basically, this is a Transformer, so it shows me if the original JavaScript and converted JavaScript. And as you can see from the left hand side, I don't really have a huge number of JavaScript files. And the one here in bold is actually uh, has some conversion issues that have to be fixed manually. Um, so anyway, so in looking at all this, like I said, not a terribly lot of code here. I mean, there's not, I mean, not even a, you know, a few hundred lines, but what I found is typical of, of again, code that's been around since 4.0 or before, um, back in the old days, the dark days of CRM three and four and before we didn't have the concept of a web resource, which was a shared resource that everyone used. So what we did is. We either put the code into the onload event uh, of each and every entity that we wanted it on, or we used an unsupported technique to put a single file in the file system and just reference that file and just injected it into our form when it loaded. So again, um, that was totally unsupported, but quite honestly, you know, you've got practicality as part of this. So as long as you're okay with the risk going with that, that's fine. So part of what we, what I found in this is this um, method here called format phone or phone validation. And this is a standard format formatting of a phone number that uh, I think came out of the SDK back in, like I said, 3.0 maybe. Um, very simplistic. I have other versions. If anybody ever wants it, I can send you. Um, but this just does uh, basically it cuts all the characters out and just rebuilds it to the um, you'll end up with um, the zip code, sorry, the um, area code in parentheses, space, uh, exchange, dash, four digits. And again, this is for North America only, of course. Um, so anyway, so I find this phone validation here on the account. And then I think probably on the contact. And then on the lead. And so not only did I find it in multiple places, but I also found multiple versions of it. Um, so there's a couple of things with this. One, it's not written correctly. So one of the things I wanted to do is come down to a singular version that I will use everywhere. And so I actually found it in this core library that somebody had defined. And it's mostly what I was looking for. Um, a I took a slight variation of this and fixed up the parameters, how it was accessed, and then I used that. This is a core library that was used everywhere. So one of the things that you will be doing whenever you do a migration is you look at your entire code base and you try to find things that are similar. So like I said, this phone validation function was uh, in several different places. I think it was five to six or seven. Um, but it wasn't exactly the same code everywhere. So the first thing to do is to find the best version of the phone validation function and copy that, and we're going to be using that going forward. So that's the first thing I did. And the next thing that I, I would do is I go and remove all of the other versions. Okay, so that's, that's kind of how you start cleaning up stuff like that. So the idea here is you reduce the amount of code that you're you're working with to the bare minimum and you only have one copy of that code so that's the beauty of the web resources so that's the first thing i did 
The next thing that you will notice if you ever do uh, uh, ever look at a system that's ever been migrated from Serum 4.0 to Serum 2011 um, is you will find a lot of uh, code that looks like this. So a blank on save or a blank on load and a blank on save functions. These are remnants of the migration process that the CRM system did to itself. Because uh, again, remember the uh, with before 2011, the JavaScript itself was located inside of the XML for the form. When they did the upgrade to 2011, they extracted that JavaScript out, created a web resource of that, and then linked it to that form. So you'll find a lot of code like this that has to be removed because it's totally 100% useless. So you'll find it on the form on load and on save events um, as possible. Also, you might find it on iframes. And again, it'll be just like what you see here. It'll be a blank function. So in this case, it was totally useless so I could get rid of it. So same with campaign activity. Contact, again, we had a bunch of things here. And um, here we have some stuff that I'm just going to, you know, quite honestly, just clean out 100%. So here's the way this works. So we have a blank on load method, so I can kill that. That's not a problem. And then we have an on save method. And on that on save method, what I'm doing is I'm running the phone validation function against each of the four phone number fields on the form. Uh, so this is the function. It, pass, it takes in a field, um, uh, which is handled to the actual attribute itself. It reformats it and puts the value back. Okay. Then what they did is they created a um, uh, an onChange method for each of those fields. And then they passed in um, the execution context as the first parameter. That's the checkbox that's on the actual um, uh, on the actual uh, event handler on the field. And they passed that to uh, the phone validation. So that's the actual field itself. Now, this is absolutely, totally uh, redundant. OK, if you do your um, validation on the on change, you do not need to do your validation on the on save because there's no way that you can execute a change event without um, uh, without uh, executing the uh, phone validation. So long story short, I can remove all of this code here. So basically this entire thing right here, I will remove because it's totally, again, useless. And since I have my other uh, phone validation field, uh, sorry, phone validation function in my other core method or core library, I will remove this as well. And then finally, um, one of the things that uh, I'm a big um, uh, proponent of is if you have an on change event that has one method call to it like this, this is totally useless. Uh, it's just a piece of code you don't need to maintain. So rather than call, uh, create an, um, an on change method for the telephone one field that just does nothing more than call the phone validation field. Why don't we just call the phone validation field to start with? And that's what you do. So long story short, everything that you see here, I delete it, every bit of it, because I totally do not need any of this stuff. Um, the only thing that I put on the contact is this core library because it has my phone validation, a variation of this code here. And then what I ended up with um, uh, is basically just uh, calling this directly from each of the fields. That's the, uh, this core library is the only one that I actually associate with the form itself. And then since all we did was just check the validation of the phone number, uh, then again, all this code is uh, to be taken out. Not a huge deal. Like I said, this is a very, very simplistic upgrade, quite honestly. It's not the, you know, the 10 or 12,000 line things that I've, I've worked with in the past. Um, so, you know, again, just a few, uh, you know, a couple of few hundred lines of code here. But again, this is just one point of maintenance that I can disregard 100%. Okay. So I went from having two web resources to having one web resource is the best way to, to put that. Okay. And then I just continued that on with everything else. So here's a customer address. It's exactly the same thing. Now, what they did here is not only did they have the phone validation um, within uh, the, the method within the uh, web resource for each of the fields, telephone one, fax, and telephone two, they actually had the same code. So not only was it here, it was down here too. 
So again, same code, just you know, done over and over again. And again, when you're migrating stuff from older versions of CRM, you will see stuff like this all the time. Um, I remember one time I upgraded um, a CRM system, and I literally found this exact same block of code everywhere. Every single phone number, it was, it was a totally different customer, every single phone number field had exactly the same block of code in it. And, you know, you think about how many phone number fields. So everyone on the lead, everyone on the contact, on the account, everywhere there was a phone number was this piece of code, which I totally, absolutely removed. Okay. And then, again, we don't have uh, an on load because it's empty. And, again, if, I, if I'm doing the on change for the phone validation, I do not need to do it on save. Because there's nowhere in here is there programmatic um, changing of the field. It's all manual. So there's, no, there's really no JavaScript to do anything. So... Long story short, again, this entire thing was deleted. And I just referenced the phone validation function from the core method there. Instant, an invoice, an invoice detail, exactly nothing in them. Delete those. Lead was exactly the same as the contact. I have a phone validation method, which I got rid of. And then all of these things here for each of the phone number fields, so there's five of them was removed and I just accessed the phone validation uh, method directly by referencing the whore library. Then I got into some weird stuff. So I see this stuff and now what the, the customer had a um, uh, had a CRM 2013 system. We're getting ready to move to 2016. So somewhere along the line they had created these new web resources but they were unused. And what they did was having a slightly different version of the stuff where, again, we had uh, two fields disabled here, and then we had uh, these phone validation things here. Um, as you may have heard me uh, state before, if you have an onload method that has um, code in it to do either disabling or hiding of a field, it is more efficient to do that with the configuration via the checkbox on the field. Okay, because what happens is, in this case, depending on the speed of the system, the user may actually watch the screen paint and then these fields become disabled. Um, it's worse when you're hiding fields because they will actually see them show up and then see them disappear, possibly, you know, within a second of each other or less. Okay, so again, makes for a bad user experience. So uh, I haven't actually done that uh, yet on, on this thing. I need to, you know, take me like 30 seconds to a minute to actually fix this. But what will happen is since these are done in the onload event, I will actually delete the onload event, go and set these two fields to uh, be disabled by default, and then I'm done. So that's another maintenance piece I don't have to have. Okay, same with customer address. We have a little bit of logic here. Okay, that's fine. One of the other things that I do, and this is a personal preference, if you find commented code, the first thing you need to do is delete it. If it's commented, it's not used. So rather than trying to find out what the heck that stuff is used for, just delete it because it's not it's not used right now. So the probability of it used before is kind of low. Most of the time what happens is it's a change in business logic because, you know, as, as time goes on, CRM changes. Um, uh, the business changes, so sometimes you have to actually make those things uh, fit together to um, to be uh, uh, you know in sync. So you can go and do it. So um, what I do with this stuff is I uh, I just uh, have a backup of this and I just delete the commented code out. The second thing that I did here is you'll notice there is a vendor change and a product change. There's actually two fields, literally the new vendor and new product. So rather than querying that one method, and they, they perform the exact same calculation, which is this method here, rather than have one method that was referenced by both of these fields, they had two, which one did the work, and the second one would just call the one that did the work. Again, totally unnecessary. I changed this to be, uh, I think, vendor product change, and then I deleted this one down here, and then just referenced this function from both of these fields on change events here. And then I left the on load like it was. Opportunity was uh, remained in place. The problem with that was I have opportunity form logic and opportunity main library.js. This one is empty. This one has code in it. I don't know why they're like that, but this is how they were set up. The product um, 
is actually, if anybody, does anybody know what this code is, where it came from? Some of you old timers on the phone, I under recognize the names. Anybody? Do you guys remember a company called C360? Yep, that's it. Ken Champion. Thanks, Ken. Um, C360 was, uh, maybe still is, a company that had uh, um, serum add-ons. And they were, I mean, for a long time, they were, uh, you you sold CRM and you included CRM C360's add-ons because that's just a, the way it had to work. Um, filled in a bunch of holes. Um, but anyway, so this is how they wrote their script. Now, the, what, what happened with this, again, they upgraded um, their CRM to where they don't need this functionality anymore or chose not to. And so I looked at the, the licenses for the C360 product and it looked like they had not actually been updated in two years. So this is an, uh, what I call an artifact. This is 100% unused um, and needs to be removed. So what, what happened with this is this came from Serum 4.0. And uh, uh, when you upgrade from Serum 4.0 to 2011, um, a lot of things come over that you have to manually kill. So what happens is I'm going to have to, so I, well, basically this entire thing is all their code. What they did is they uh, put in a, um, uh, a line at the bottom of every, sorry, let me get Jeff's face out of the way. Uh, at the end of every line of their code, they put that comment and then their uninstall process would actually go and look for code with that at the, at the end and actually delete it from the, uh, from the JavaScript um, in there and not touch the ones that anybody personally wrote. OK, this is all their code, so it can actually come out. The whole thing can be deleted. OK, so one of the things um, that I actually use, I use my uh, snapshot tool for is I, I want to go and delete these things because like like you saw, a lot of these are unused, but I don't know if they're unused. I just see that they're empty, but they're still referenced. So one of the reports that I have actually will list out um, the entity, the form, um, what field it's on, if it's on a field, and the events, so like on load, on save, on change. Is it enabled or not? Uh, the library name, the function name, and if it passes in the execution context. I use this to help me determine if that thing is actually used. The other way to do it is to use the check dependencies button on the um, within the solution. So like the default solution, if you click on the... Um, uh, check dependencies. It will actually tell you if it's in use or not. And of course, you cannot you you cannot uh, re uh, delete it if it's referenced by anybody. So I use this to kind of give me a handle as okay, it's used in these places. I found a lot of functions that were referenced that were not enabled. Okay, this is horribly confusing. Okay, so I mean, it is literally nothing in there that's turned on. It's all empty. Okay. Okay. Uh, hey, Carol. Um, this is actually my snapshot documentation tool. Generates this um, this thing here. Okay, and that's two. Yeah. So snapshot is my documentation tool. So basically, you point it at um, you point it at at your um, organization, and you select what you want, and it will generate uh, several megabytes of files, possibly. So all kinds of stuff. This is uh, the standard. Uh, basically, what's in this worksheet behind me here is just in the customization section. So just by selecting web resources, it will generate all these reports because they're all part of the web resource framework. So um, web resources and forms will actually cause these things to be generated. So I have a list of the usages of um, the web resources. So where, where are they referenced at? Okay, so that's one type of report, and the second type of report is the actual how they're being referenced. So again, uh, entity, form, field if necessary, event, enabled, uh, library, function. Okay, so again, this is used for stuff like, like for instance, um, when you get to 2013, we have the additional forms. Um, so part of what you're going to have to do is to put in... Um, you're going to have to uh, migrate the information form fields and JavaScript, et cetera, over to the new um, entity forms. Now, there is a, a, a merge process, and uh, we can talk about that if you guys want. It's very, very dangerous to use because it can cause all kinds of very odd side effects. 
especially when you start extracting uh, solutions and reimport them back. Um, it can cause problems where they won't import and you have to manually hack the customization XML file to actually get the data out. And um, it's just uh, not a way to get the data out, but to actually make it import. You have to go change the IDs. It's a real big pain in the butt. It happened to me one time. I ignored some advice from, from my friend Yuka, and sure enough, I stepped in, stepped right in the middle of it. It took me two hours to, to get a solution imported because I just did, did what I shouldn't have done. So anyway, so part of what we have to do here is we have to clean up the information form because what I did, I actually did this live. So I cleaned up the information form. Made it, uh, made it all pretty and sparkly, and then I went and migrated the fields from the information form to the uh, entity form. So, like for the, for the account uh, for that, here you see appointments already there. Uh, most of these are information. Okay. So anyway, so that's another another thing that you have to kind of watch out for is the the dual forms and stuff. Okay. So. Um, Got all that done. Again, as you see, most of the stuff was totally unused. And and as I was showing you here, the even scarier thing was even for the stuff that was used, it was disabled. Okay. So this is, I mean, this is realistically, I could have just gone there and started deleting stuff and it would never known. But I, it, it was a process that took me, you know, a couple, three hours because I had to go and look at the code. I had to look at the configuration. I had ran the snapshot report. I said, oh, well, these things are not even being used. Like, oh, okay. Now they're not being used. I'm like, okay, were they used? Is it really necessary? Most of the reason these things are not being used, quite honestly, is because they were converted. Uh, and I think it, I think it would default it to, to being disabled. Um, but again, I don't know their system. So I see a disabled method. I'm like, oh, why is it disabled or disabled function? Why is it disabled? So that's one of the things you have to wor wor worry about. Here's the end result of this. Actually, sorry, we have two, two results of that. Um, but uh, this is Visual Studio, so um, Transformer actually generates a Visual Studio project out of this or solution. Um, one thing I want to uh, uh, kind of give you a piece of advice here. Do you see these five things here? Do you notice there's no icon beside those? They may know why there's no icon beside those. Nope. There's no extension. Yep, there you go. Here's Robert. Yeah, there's no extension. So rule number one, when you create a web resource of any type, always specify the extension for that file type. Uh, because when you export it out into um, a solution that um, you're, you have inside Visual Studio or whatever tool it is, doesn't matter. Um, without the extension, um, the, the other products that you might work with, like Visual Studio, don't know what type it is. And you can't change the name once you save it, of course. Okay, so always give an extension. So we have these in here. So long story short, what I ended up with, if I'm not mistaken, is I ended up with three. Let me go see. I'll set it. I ended up with three web resources out of all of this. So pretty much I ended up with a core library. And then I think there were two or three others. And I think the account one I can actually, yeah, I can actually kill that one later today. Okay. So um, this is how that worked. Okay. Um, what I did, uh, are you guys familiar with the uh, CRM Solution Manager? It's a commercial product. Um, this is what I use to actually connect to uh, their system. So this is a product that will actually connect to your CRM system and then allow you to extract specific types of resources. So um, uh, web resources, you can do plugins and things like that. And what it allows me to do is actually make changes to uh, the JavaScript and then push them back into CRM and publish them. And I'm working within Visual Studio. And if you've ever heard any of my JavaScript talks, I always talk about the value and the almost necessity of using a real code editor to do stuff. Like, for instance, see this return right here? It highlights very clearly that this code right here is not going to be executed because there's a return and it dims it out. Just so you know, this is also great for using uh, add on tools like ReSharper. ReSharper saying, hey, you know what? Um, the coding style you selected really wants you to put in double quotes instead of single quotes, things like that. Uh, CRM Solution Manager also has IntelliSense and, uh, stuff built into it. So you can actually start typing, like if I typed in um, XRM dot page, if it's hooked up, it may not be hooked up right. I don't think it's hooked up right. 
but if it was hooked up correctly, uh, when I start typing in xrm.page, it would put a dot. It would actually pop up the things that are actually um, uh, available for that. Yeah, th sorry, this this is not the their its solution. This is just the one I created from uh, Explorer. Or sorry, uh, Transformer. So anyway, so again, really simple, but. The end of the story here is I was able to remove about 98% of all of the code in the system, along with all of the web resources that were totally unused. Um, like I said, I think, let me just go, let me go find it. Which one it is? Uh, let me just go open it. Okay, so I went from what, 15 to 4? Okay, and actually, like I said, that um, that one I can kill, so I'll end up with 3. Okay, and again, all these web resources that I found were uh, unused. I deleted them because I, I didn't want them in the system. Because, again, if somebody else after me comes in, just like I did, they have to kind of perform a little bit of education service. And you're like, oh, my God, what is this thing? And, I again, this is a horribly you know simple version of this. You multiply this out by, you know, um, by 10 or 20,000 lines of code. And what you end up with is more of the same. So it's a lot of work to, to go through stuff, to pull things up. Um, like I said, how many lines of code? This is my actual worksheet here. So, yeah, 572 lines of code. Okay. This is this is the, uh, on the transformer, this is the actual um, report generated by the conversion process. This works, this will be with the trial or, or the full version. It always generates a report for you. So it gives you a summary of events, and I have like some things in there I put in to just keep track of stuff when it work. Any conversion alerts, duplicate functions, any external files referenced, iframes, things like that. Okay, but again, the end result of this is uh, basically I've got a fairly clean system. Got very little JavaScript on it. Uh, all the forms have been merged together or manually merged together. So. Um, we're getting ready to move. Like I said, we've got to go to 2016. So that means we've got to stop for a break in 2015 and then upgrade to 2016. So, you know, that's probably a day's worth of work uh, once we get everything um, all ready to go. So um, that's about it. So who has questions? You can either put your hand up and I'll unmute you or you can just ask a question. Okay, Andrew has a good question. Let's see. So you mentioned you need to upgrade your JavaScript from CRM 403 to 4 to 2011. Uh, one, every time you upgrade CRM, does the JavaScript need to be updated? And two, how do you know that the JavaScript code needs to be updated? Is it the case of testing the code uh, if it's broken to look at? Um, no, Andrew. Um, the issue is um, this... Uh, um, this model here, the what we call the xrm.page model, uh, came into existence within uh, CRM 2011. Prior to that, you'll find stuff uh, like, um, uh, where do we have that? I had some somewhere. Oh, there it is. Serum form all. This is the Serum three and four uh, model. Okay, um, so basically, what my transformer tool does is it converts that into that, and it also converts any of the um, the unsupported code into supported code as much as possible. That's a one-time operation. Most of the time, once you get into the 2011 format, uh, which is, you know, again, it really hasn't changed. They just had new stuff. Once you get to 2011, you're mostly good with stuff. Um, but it's it's the migration of your code. Now, the, and the, big, the biggest deal is when you go from 4.0 to 2011, you have to upgrade all of your code everywhere, not just your JavaScript. 
Um, the .NET is even worse. I mean, I've got the tool here to do the the, the uh, JavaScript. I mean, there's still a lot of manual operations that have to take place. Um, .NET is worse. I've got a, a free tool out on CodePlex to upgrade your your object model there, but that's a lot that's a lot more a lot worse because it's it's uh, more of a um, more of a change uh, to the .NET stuff. So all your plugins, any integration code has to be modified. And the reason that this is a concern now is because you cannot um, you cannot upgrade to CRM 2013 if you have this stuff in there. It won't it won't let you uh, it won't pass the uh, test. There's a thing called a code validation tool, which is a solution that Microsoft um, uh, offers for 2013 and 2015. And you install the solution, then it will run through and look for very specific things. It looks for things like that. Um, it looks for the CRM 2011, uh, 20, uh, sorry, 2007 endpoint, which is a CRM 40 endpoint, which looks like um, uh, that's not it. I don't see it here. Uh, but anyway, so yeah, so um, there's things like that. So the the move from 40 to 2011 is pretty traumatic, um, but you have to you have to do it. There's just no way around it. And then. The move from 2011 to 2013 is not traumatic as far as your code goes, but it is going to be traumatic because you have to move your stuff from the old form, the information form, into the new entity forms for those entities that have them. That is more of a, of a deal, a bigger deal than it would seem to be. But the, the, and the issue with that is the entity forms are the ones that are supported going forward. So when you get to Sierra in 2015, and 16, uh, if you're using the mobile product, for instance, those are the only ones supported. So the information forms are totally ignored. And at some point in time, Microsoft is just going to drop support for them. So you're going to have to bite the bullet sometime and upgrade. Uh, Gordon, we asked, so where can I get Snapshot and Transformer? Those are commercial tools. You have to buy them. They're on my website. I can uh, just go out to serumaccelerators.net. Um, uh, the, the the trial the, there's trials of both so you can actually try them out. Uh, Ken asks, are business rules in uh, CRM uh, built in CRM itself visible? Not no, because they're not technically actually JavaScript until the form opens, to to my knowledge. Uh, so basically, if you don't know what the business rules are, that's a that's the thing Microsoft created to allow us to create um, to perform JavaScript like actions. Uh, through a designer, so there's no code involved. The end result of that is it will actually generate JavaScript, but to my knowledge, it doesn't actually generate the JavaScript until the form is loaded. Uh, as far as I know, the storage is still in XAML. Anybody else? Nope. Okay. Like I said, I, I've got another webinar. This is a full blown webinar that I'll, I'll uh, probably be holding next next month um, that kind of covers this stuff in more detail, what to, what to watch out for. Um, but like we're talking with uh, Andrew's question there, the biggest thing is when you go from four to 2011, you have to remove all of the references to, to CRM 20, uh, the CRM form uh, model and get it over to the XRM.page model. Um, the biggest thing you'll notice is uh, the, the, the uh, XRM.page model is more verbose, as you can see. Um, it's not much more verbose, but it, it just seems like it. Um, but, uh, anyway, so again, it's, it's a bit of a, um, it's a bit of a, uh, of a transition because there's a lot of stuff that, that, that has to be done. Uh, the biggest gain that you will get, which I think is, is, is terrific is you will actually reduce in most cases, uh, a lot of code. Um, I, I've, I did three upgrades over the past, uh, several years that dropped somewhere between 40 to 55% of the code base just totally eliminated it either by replaced functionality um, or by just uh, deduplication of code. Um, and, you know, I cannot emphasize enough. You're doing the upgrade. Don't, you know, don't go cheap on it. You know, spend the time, spend the energy and spend the money to actually get it done correctly because you will save yourself so much time in the future. Um, and we, you know, one other thing about that, there are a lot of companies that I've run into, they are literally not upgrading for 4.0. They are starting from scratch because the business they had seven years ago, eight years ago now, was not the business they have today. So all of the 
you know, quite honestly, crap that they have inside CRM is totally irrelevant. You know, they need their customers, they need their activities and a few other things, and then they can pull that out with SSIS. Okay, so they'll use some kind of tool like King's Soft SSIS Connector. They'll uh, create a brand new CRM 2015-2016 uh, system and then pull, uh, you know, modify it the way they want and then put everything, pull that data out and just push it directly into the system and just um, sunset the 4.0 system. Let's see, Carol asks, have you uh, seen many starting from scratch when going from 2011 to 2015? Uh, Carol, what do you mean by scratch? Uh, that's kind of what I just mentioned. Yeah. Uh, so literally, they'll just they'll just go straight to uh, you know now 2016 and just uh, pull the data out because, like I said, you know I. I uh, uh, one of the partners I was working with uh, actually bought one of my other tools, uh, what I call Explorer, that lets you do some analysis on the fields and, and what they're populated. And they had – this is their internal system. They had like um, like 100 fields or something like that on the contact that had no data in them because the way that they were doing is you know, pretty much everybody was a system administrator at one point in time, and the salespeople or slash sales manager over the years had just added fields that they thought they needed to do something. And then those fee those people left, and nobody ever put any data into them. So they literally ended up with a hundred fields on contact that were totally useless. And it was just kind of funny. Um, you find that a lot. Uh, you know, like I said, when you're doing the upgrade, now is a really, really great time to do a full blown analysis of your system to make to make sure that you know, do I really need to upgrade? I mean, um, like I said, I've known several customers that they they chose not to um, because it just wasn't worth the time. Um, because either, you know, they, the, the business that they had, again, doesn't match the then versus the business now. It doesn't match. Their processes are different and, you know, everything in between. Andrew asked, are there differences uh, between having your JavaScript code on premises versus online? No, it's the same code. Absolute same code. Okay. Anybody else? Okay. Well, um, again, if um, if you need anything, just uh, drop me a line at uh, Mitch at XRMCoaches.com. And like I said, you can go out to my um, CRMAccelerators.net and get uh, trial versions of my other stuff. Um, and, you know, it, it will help you. with So even the trials will give you, a, a, I think, a lot of value uh, without having to purchase it. But, uh, you know, um, I want you to remember that. You know, even even with the tools that you get, there's still going to be a lot of manual labor. There's just absolutely no way around that. So, you know, don't think you're going to buy a tool from anybody, myself or anybody else, and think it's going to do all the work for you. There's still absolutely a ton of work that has to be done depending on the size of your system. You know, if you if you have a 12 or 14,000 line system and, um, you know, all kinds of entities and, and, you know, web services you're calling here, there and yonder, uh, it will be uh, it will be uh, a, a challenge to get everything upgraded. So, you know, don't uh, don't underestimate the, the amount of time and effort. Okay. Okay, people. I really appreciate the time. Uh, sorry for the short notice, but I was like uh, finishing up on this this week, and I was like, you know what? I, I need to. I've been meaning to talk about this for a while. Like I said, I'll get that other webinar spun up next month. Um, I'll send everybody out notes uh, uh, here shortly with the with the schedule for for May, and uh, you guys can come to that one. And if you got any other questions in the meantime, feel free to drop me a line. Okay. <laughs>